Thinking of traveling with your dog? I made some big mistakes traveling with Mango and he didn't hardly eat for the first month. We're gonna share some important tips next. next. Welcome to the channel. I'm Paul. This is Liz and this is Mango. <laughs> These are exciting times to push past fear, build confidence, and live amazing. And you'll definitely live amazing if you're thinking of taking your dog with you in your RV. Mango has been on the road for 18 months and we've learned a lot. Actually, the first month he hardly ate at all. I made a big mistake. So we have lots of tips and uh, things to share with you that will really help you. So the first tip would be get a checkup for your fur baby before you take off and just a general health checkup to make sure he's up or she's up for the, uh, I keep saying he. That's because we have a he, but he or she. Also, if you know that your dog gets anxious while traveling, you may look into some medications, you know, for being on the road. Yeah, that'll probably improve over time as, as you, uh, as he gets more used to uh, traveling. So while you're at the vet, there are some shots that you absolutely need, and this is actually where I made a mistake. So you need to have your rabies shot, dog flu, parvo, bordetello. Bordetella. Bordetella, I wanna say bordetella, bordetella. And since my dog was a backyard dog, he didn't need bordetella, he never went to the kennel, and that is kennel cop is what bordetella is. So you can run into problems, let's say if your rig uh, breaks down and you need to board your dog. I had a situation where I needed to have some medical work done all day and we couldn't find uh, any place to put Mango, right? Yeah, he didn't have a shot so nobody would take him. And you also will need the rabies shot and proof of all these shots uh, with you because if you cross the border into Canada or Mexico, you will need to have proof of that. If you happen to get into the country, there's a good chance you wouldn't get back. Tip four, remember to bring his medication or her, or her, <laughs> and a first aid kit. You never know what's going to happen. The next tip is that you're going to want to have a collar with a tag on it that has the name and phone number where you can be reached should your dog and you get separated. That's right. And then consider also getting your dog chipped. The next tip is to bring a recent photo of your dog. Now, you may be like me and you take a photo every day of your dog, but if not, you want to have it just in case you need it. Mango's falling asleep on my shoulder. <laughs> or he's mesmerized by the fire. Yeah, he's... <laughs> the next tip would be grooming supplies. You're certainly going to want to have that. You want to keep them brushed so that they don't, uh, they don't shed too much. If you're talking long term, you're going to want the clippers, brush, shampoo, the whole bit. The next tip is to bring a crate. Even if you don't use a crate, a crate's gonna be important if your rig goes into the shop and you need to take your dog to a hotel or if there's some kind of emergency and like the rig burns down, you absolutely do need to have a crate. It needs to be big enough for the dog to stand up, turn around and of course lay down. I like the foldable kind because I can store it and I will put a link to this and any other products that we mentioned into the description. The next tip is if you're not traveling with your dog in the crate, you're going to want to have a harness where you can attach your dog to the vehicle some way with, uh, using the seat belt. The way it should be is that your dog should be able to sit up so he can look out the window. He should be able to curl up and lay down as well. We also use a travel rug so he has a comfortable place to sit on. If you have leather or cloth seats, you probably still want to add some padding for your dog for the road. Yeah, he spends a lot of time back there and uh, we just want to make it as comfortable as we can for him. Speaking of that, remember to take breaks while traveling. Your dog is going to really want to stretch his legs and in fact, Young dogs, they have a lot of energy, so they'll need to be, they'll need to let that energy out. And older dogs might be arthritic, and I think Mango is, so we actually stop more frequently so he doesn't stiffen up and he gets a little bit of a walk. We probably stop on average about every two hours mm -hmm. and uh, get him out of the truck and walk him around a bit, and uh, it's good for us too. And you're probably thinking that you're going to just have travel bowls. That's where the story comes in. <laughs> Where I went wrong. I thought, well, you know, if I'm going to be traveling, I should just get Mango some plastic food bowls. Well, our first month on the road, I had these plastic food bowls and he kept kicking them over. I would feed him inside, outside, didn't matter. He would knock them over and I couldn't figure it out. But it turns out 
he didn't like the new bowls. So if you're thinking of buying some travel food bowls, definitely try them out at home before hitting the road. In Mango's case, the exact bowl that he uses at home, even though it's breakable, it's ceramic, he has with him because he likes it. So you'd want to have some kind of travel water for them. Some dogs will drink out of a water bottle, which is great. You can put that in a crate if you're using the crate or just get a spill-proof water bowl that they have access to while you're driving. Yeah, we have a silicone collapsible bowl that, that actually attaches to his leash. The next tip is that wherever you're gonna go, you make sure in advance that it's a dog-friendly park. We found a park in uh, the Yuma area. Uh, we really liked the park and we wanted to go there, but then we found out that they don't take dogs. Definitely check. Some of them will have some rules, such as the leash must be six feet longer or less and some will ban the retractable leashes. Be aware that no matter where you are, there's always the possibility that a dog could get off leash or be running around loose. Yeah, unfortunately, we had an incident here a couple of nights ago Yes. where two dogs came out of their campsite, campsite and, <laughs> yeah. and uh, got, got him on his back. Yeah, they rolled him over. I was scared to death. So things can happen really fast. You always want to be aware when you're out there with your dog. On that note, I recommend a leash and harness system that I really love. I think it's uh, something by Two Hounds. I'll put a link to it. But Mango has an option of either being walked on a six foot leash. So if we're out like on a path or somewhere, I put the six feet in and then I can fold it in half and actually walk him on only three feet. So if we're in crowds or if we're in a busy area with lots of cars, then it's only three feet. I, I really love it and I recommend it for traveling. The next tip is kind of a smelly subject, but you need to have poo bags with you. I also like a certain kind of poo bags and I will have them in the description. Another tip is to have a retractable cable for outside of your rig. Uh, we have one right now attached to the picnic table outside that when we're out there doing whatever, uh, we, we take Mango out and put him on the cable so he can be out there with us. When we're relaxing on the patio, he gets that too. It's a 15 foot retractable cable and it is like the best thing ever. Do not use it if you're gonna not be there, but it's great as long as you're there with your dog. Another option is to use a portable fence. They come in all different kinds and they can be wonderful, particularly if you have smaller dogs where you can just set up a fence and let them run around in their own little yard as you can. Make sure you've got your dog's food with you. Keep in mind that if you feed him a special diet or some kind, you might not be able to get that on the road. If you have to order it through mail order, you're going to do that in advance of you actually needing it. And that brings us into storing that. I always stored Mango's food in a great big Tupperware tub. You probably do that too. Well, I learned a really great tip and that is to put his food into gallon Ziploc bags. And I order his food on Amazon. He really likes it and it's a good vet approved dog food that's a dry food. And if your dog takes any supplements, vitamins, that kind of thing, absolutely pack that with you, of course. Mango uses this special oil, which is good for his coat. It, you may not be able to tell, but it actually cuts down on his shedding. He's <laughs> extra furry because we, we bathed him for the camera. But... We have, and we haven't brushed him yet. And toys. He's going to get bored otherwise. He or she is going to want those familiar items with him. So definitely pack the ball, the chew toy, that sort of thing. Make sure your rig is pet proof. There are things in the rig where your dog could easily get injured. The recliner is one example. When it's up, you make sure that he or she doesn't get under the foot before you put it down on top of them. Mm -hmm. I mean, just your basic stuff that you would think about at home too. So you also want to check that the door latches securely so that your dog doesn't escape. And the windows may need to be checked too, just to make sure they're secure and that your dog can't get out. So you definitely want to introduce your dog to your camper. So while your camper's in the driveway, let your dog hang out there with you. Maybe you'll even camp overnight in your driveway. Just kind of let your dog sit and relax and play. You could even get out the treats and just you know kind of help your dog get used to it right before you're gonna take off on a trip you probably don't want the dog eating that could be problematic yeah they can actually get car sick pretty easily 
So you want to withhold the food, never withhold water. So you want to have a plan for traveling on hot days. Say, say you have to stop at the store. What are you going to do with your dog? You know you can't leave your dog in a hot car. So you might be able to put him in the camper and run the generator, open the roof vent, that kind of thing. And you also need to have the same plan while you're at the campground and if you leave your dog behind while you're off exploring. There are temperature sensitive fans, uh, roof vent fans that um you can set them to go, go on at uh, 80 degrees. I believe in having a backup plan. You know, what if the power goes out at the campground? What if I'm shopping and the generator decides to just stop? You know, I'm just kind of that way where I want a backup plan. So I always have two things going. Where we're at, we're, we're on shore power. So of course, if we left uh, for any length of time and it was going to be a hot day, we'd have the we'd have the thermostat set so the AC would come on. And we'd have a couple windows open just in case. As soon as you arrive to a new campground or a new place, you want to find the nearest 24-hour vet veterinarian and put it into your phone for emergencies. Yep, just put it in your phone every time you move. So one way to help your dog adjust to travel is to follow a routine. So the routine we follow is that he is first in the truck because you know we have a towable. So we put him in the truck first so that we can focus on closing everything up. And then when we get to a new place, we let him out of the truck last so we're not distracted. And then we have time to focus on him. So before you bring your dog inside, have the food and water set out for him in its usual space and maybe even a treat or two. And then he can just wander around inside your rig while you finish setting up on the inside. Being a dog, he's gonna wanna explore the new surroundings. Take him for a nice long walk when you get there and let him uh sniff to his heart's content. <laughs> yeah, let him stop and do whatever he wants to do because that will help his comfort level. If you watch our channel, you may have noticed that I got a haircut and Paul actually cut my hair yesterday and he also did what? <laughs> He cut your face. <laughs> he did. If you look really closely, he cut my the face. scissors got away from me. <laughs> yeah, but I just wanted to share that. Um, that you, you did a great job. Uh -huh. <laughs> so what did we miss? Let us know in the comments your tips for traveling with a dog. And join the A-Team. Just push on the subscribe button. We'll see you in the next video.